Hi guys, another quick review here for you of the um, CRT version of the Superstar 3900 EFT. Um, this is not my radio, this, is, this belongs to somebody else that I know that's kindly let me borrow it for, for this review. So anybody out there thinking of buying one, getting one on the second hand market, this might be a little bit of use to you. Um, so th this radio here, you know, as soon as, soon as you, um, you clap your eyes on it, you know, you think, wow, everything's blue. For me, this is too blue. Um, I mean, I like I like the signal display here, where it's blue. I also like the frequency counter, where it's blue. But for me, the signal meter, it's a little bit too dark. I prefer a more a yellowy light, orangey light, more of a classic look. But, um, you know, everybody's not got the same taste. But um, this particular radio is all blue. Um, this radio's got quite a few functions on it. Um, so we'll start with the, um, the volume and squelch every radio usually has. Um, here next in we've got the mic gain, RF gain. Um, this little knob here, this controls the echo and the, the RF power, that's something we'll test out in a moment. Um, here's all your bands, so you've actually got 12 bands on this radio and it's, uh, it's used by this high and low button here, so that makes you flick between um, it's obviously six bands on the low, click in high, and there'll be another six bands on the high. Um, here's all your modes, um, like every other radio has. And obviously your fine and coarse clarifier. This little button here is for your Roger bleep on and off. Um, the bottom below is uh, 10 KCs, so that comes as standard, so that's good. Um, noise blanker a &L switch. Um, that is your SWR button. That, that's pretty good because you click that in, um, there's no calibrating it. It automatically tells you what your SWR is. So that, that, that's a that's a plus point for me. That one is. As I said earlier on, that's your high and low bands, and this is your talk back. That's another little function we'll be looking at in a moment. Anyway, this particular radio, I've had it for for a weekend now. Um, it's supplied with all the box. It's in very good condition, um, and it seems to work well for a, a newer type radio. One thing I will say is. The, um, the controls are a little bit flimsy, I mean, there's a bit of movement in the controls, you know, there you go, it's got a bit of a wiggle on it there. Um, the controls do not feel like the older type radios where they're very solid, they do feel a little bit cheap, dare I say it. Um, anyway, getting back to the radio, um, what we'll do is we'll test the echo function on the talkback, I mean, it's got a, quite a good echo on it, this radio, I mean, some people don't like echoes, but I... I don't mind a little bit of echo if it's set correctly, if it's not over the top. Um, so it has got a really nice sounding echo with quite a long delay on it, this radio. So if that's something that you're looking for, um, that might be something that um, would, would make you want to buy this radio even more. Because the echo does sound pretty good, I must admit. Um, okay, so what we do, I've got the mic here. Um, we'll give it a little bit of a go on there with the echo function. So if we just turn the radio up slightly, let's see what we get here. So the echo at the moment is on very low, so we'll see what it sounds like with the talkback function on. That's it, here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, testing. Mm, that's not really very, very strong at the moment. So let, let's put it up just over halfway there. One, two, one, two. Uh, one, two, three, testing. One, two. So we've got a bit, bit more of an echo there, quite a nice sounding echo. Um, oops, let's put the scotch up a little bit. Um, let's let's put it up a little bit higher. So this is the full. This would be echo in full mode. One two three, one two, one two three echo, echo. So as you can tell, it's got quite a long delay on the echo, and to me that's too much. But um, this is just to show you what, what the radio can, can do. Um, another thing about this radio, as you can see the display is flickering. I have noticed this radio drifts quite a lot. Um, the radio has been on for about 15-20 minutes now and it's still flickering around a little bit. Um, so bear that in mind, it will take 20 minutes to warm up I'd say. Um, most, most radios do that, most of the 3900s anyway even the ones without the the, um, the frequency display but um, yeah I mean I mean it seems to have settled down a little bit there and if we look at the uh, 
the KC shift. We're not bang on 12. I mean, that, that's bang on 12 and it's reading being slightly out. So that, that I've got to admit, that that's something that would annoy me. It's waiting for it to settle. And I did notice yesterday, having, having, having it on for an hour, it was still flicking around. So it, it's kind of annoying. Um, so let's just push, put this back to where we should actually be. Okay, we'll be on the zeros now. Look. Okay, lovely. Um, so let's use the 10kc switch. So this is this is something that you'd use on SSB if you wanted to get into the alpha channels. Um, so this is quite handy. You click the switch and your 10kc is up. So that, that's that's brilliant. This is your Roger bleep on and off. Obviously, that's straightforward. The noise blanker and ANL on this radio seem to work pretty well. Um, I used it yesterday and. I did notice a difference, so that does work. As I said, the NL, the uh, SWR switch is brilliant. That works. No calibrating. It's very quick. If you're in the car, it's handy. Um, so well, let's try these high, the high band switch. So at the minute we're on the low band, so we put it into high. Oh, sorry, it's the way around. We were on the high band before. Sorry. Um, so now we're on the low band. So now we've got 24. It goes all the way down. Look there to 2405. O should be, that's right. And then we flip through the bands 25, 25 and a half, 26, 26 and a half, nearly into the uh, 27 megs there. Then we flip the high band, we're up to 29 now, and we can take it back, and that starts bringing it down again. So the coverage on this radio is very good, I must admit. Uh, you 12 blocks of 40 um, so having used this radio for the weekend would I buy one I don't think so um, it's not a terrible radio and for one of the more modern radios it's not too bad but for me it hasn't got that feel of a quality radio um, SSB wise it sounds really good on sideband on FM it, it there is a mod, but it does sound muffled. Um, it's something to do with the echo board. So if you if you you can disconnect the echo board from the inside, it's dead easy. It's just moving a few jumpers around, and that does improve the FM audio. But it still doesn't sound a hundred percent to me. Uh, but on sideband, that's not a problem. If you just want a sideband radio, this this radio will be fine, and you don't use FM. It really does sound good on sideband. The audio is very strong. The microphone supplied with it. Um, here we go, I'll just bring it into view now, uh, the CRT microphone, um, it's really good, it's very heavy, it's got a nice weight to it, um, it's the SRA158, because I don't know if you know, but this radio is actually a clone of the Ranger Superstar 158, um, is it the EDX or something like that, so it's exactly the same radio with um, different stampings on it, different company names. But um, there you go, YouTube. There's a quick um, review of the Superstar 3900 EFT. It will be going back in the box and going back to my friend. Again, thanks very much for allowing me to use it over the weekend to do this review. Um, subscribe, guys. You know, comment. You don't have to, but it'd be nice. Best 7 freeze for now. Good DX, guys.